So today as we approach the old city, our guide stops us at the wall and talks about the reasons cities were walled and the protection that it helped um, the people who lived within the city. We can see the big metal door and it had the smaller door inside which would have been the eye of the needle. Um, that was only opened at night for those to come into the city at night. We can see the different layers of the city. The bottom layer is stone from the Herod era, and then on top of that is Byzantine stone and then Crusader stone. Um, it's interesting that as the city was destroyed and rebuilt, they would just rebuild on the old foundations or they would level things off and cover them up and rebuild on top of that. We then walk through the old city um, down the streets and look at some of the shops on our way um, to our next stop. And we see, you know, souvenir shops right away. And as we get further into the city, we see the shops that more locals would shop at, like your Home Depots. Um, your clo there's clothing stores as well as there's the food market. Here is the courtyard of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This church was built over a traditional spot that Helena, the mother of Constantine, designated as the hillside where Christ was crucified. This hill was just outside the inner city wall and, and it also had a tomb nearby and so that was designated as this is where Christ was crucified and this church has been built over that spot. You can come and kneel at this altar and touch that rock outcropping of the traditional site of the cross. And then under this dome is a tomb that has been rebuilt. The tomb that was here, um, they excavated it and wanted more people to be able to see it. And as they took the hillside away, the tomb um, was destroyed so a tomb was built in its place and there is marble and fine workmanship designating this spot as a burial of Christ although it would not be the traditional um, materials used in the era I think that the church wanted to use its finest material in honor of the, the Christ as we left the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, we did come to that inner city wall. It was built in the first temple era, Solomon's Temple, and um, but the city had expanded around that wall. And we can see the map here showing Jerusalem at the first temple era and what it would have looked like. The map, of course, is oriented to the east. One thing we found interesting um, was that all of the buildings are made out of the Jerusalem limestone. There is not much color in the city, whether it's modern or old. Um, it was all built out of that same limestone. Building codes. So here we see the Western Wall, and this is that gate that we entered into yesterday. And we're going to come down to that Western Wall, and you can notice the different layers of a stone from the different eras. Um, this western wall, however, the lower layer is the Herod era stone that Herod built to make the temple mount more square on top when he remodeled the temple. So the Jews are able to come to this wall to worship and pray, um, and it's the closest they have to the temple, the historic temple. Um, the Muslims do control the top of the temple square, and so no prayer is allowed up there. It, prayer is allowed for the Jews at the Western Wall. Tradition states that if you write the names of those who are sick on papers um, and put them in the cracks, the prayers of 
all those praying at the wall can help in healing um, those who are sick or afflicted. I'm going to go put my pra prayer in the name. roll okay. in the temple wall. The women do worship at a different um, spot than the men. It is divided by a fence. However, on this rainy, rainy day, the men were able to go to an um, enclosed area um, to pray and worship. So meanwhile, on the men's side, There were many bar mitzvahs happening at this time, and so we can have a look at some of the traditions that the Jews have um, when a young man comes of age and learns the order of prayer. As we leave the Western Wall, we come across um, family groups that are approaching the Western Wall um, for a bar mitzvah. Um, great celebrations, lots of music, lots of um, happiness, yeah, lots of celebration. We then leave the city through the Dung Gate that is right there near the Western Wall. Now we drive out to the countryside a little bit and we've come to a tell, which is a Hebrew word for hill, but most under most tells are archaeological remains of elder cities and so this tell is Bet Shemesh, which is the area that Samson and Delilah were from. And as we're on this hill, we see a single red flower and learn that this is a lily of the field. So a little ways farther, we come to the Valley of Elah. This is the valley where David fought Goliath, the Philistine. Our guide gave us each a little slingshot and um, we were able to pick up some stones and try our hand at throwing stones over to that valley. That wraps up our day two in Israel. Stick around, there's more to come.